Welcome to D-Lab Electronics. On the bench this morning, I have a 5F1 Champ kit. The fellow that built it did a great job, but he said when he turns it on, things will light up, but there's absolutely no sound. So let's go through and inspect it, see if there's any build errors, but I think I already know what's going on. Let's take a look. So here's the inside of the chassis of the little Champ build. You can see its construction looks pretty good. Maybe some of these wires could be trimmed back. But solder connections on the eyelet board look great. I checked his grounds. Everything going to the eyelet board appears to be correct. But when you go over here into the power supply area, you see the most common problem of all these champ builds. And that's these ground lugs that use the transformer to bond to the chrome plated chassis. So look down here, this is the ground for the center tap of the power transformer. It's looser than a goose. So here's the following system that I'm going to show you guys that you can do yourself and it will prove to be a reliable ground eliminating these loose ground lugs off of the transformer. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole here in the chassis for a number six screw. Then you need to rough up the chassis and get that chrome plating off of there because that also interferes with a good ground. We'll put a screw through with a lock washer and a three lug terminal board. Center lug will be ground. The two outside lugs will be for the filament lines. We're going to get that installed, make sure everything's secure, and then we'll attempt a power up and see if the amp plays. Our first step, we need to drill the hole in the chassis for our terminal board that will mount inside. I recommend that you simply center it up, come down about midway, make sure that you have enough room for your wiring to swing to the center ground lug. I like to use these little eighth inch center drills for this purpose. Number one, they're accurate. Number two, they don't go in too far after you drill through so the chances of hitting wiring is minimal. Alright, I got my hole drilled. I was initially going to use a 632 screw, but I found that the terminal board that I selected will actually accommodate at 832. So we're going to open that hole up a little bit more so we can use the bigger stud. So the hole is drilled for the 832 screw, which will be our ground stud. Now I'm going to take my Dremel tool with a little grinding bit. I'm going to remove some of the chrome around this outside edge. Same thing on the inside, but a little bit more because we want our new terminal board with a star bit to bite into that chassis without the interference of the chrome plating. All right, now you're going to take your 832 screw, put it in through the hole. You can see that the chrome plating has been removed. And then you install a star washer so that can bite into the chassis. Then you will install your terminal board with another star washer and the retaining nut. So not only will it bite into the chassis but also trap that lug between two star washers and give you a very secure ground. Well, there's our new terminal board installed, so the center is the ground. So at this point, I'm going to remove the center tap of the power transformer and the ground from our power cord. We'll land them here on this stud, and then we should be able to power it up and see if we have high voltage. So at this point, I only have the three grounds hooked up to our new terminal board. So we got our power ground, center tap, and this green line goes down for the capacitors. I've installed the tubes. We're going to bring it up on a Variac and see if we hear any signs of life. So I always bring them up on a Variac so I can watch the current. So as the high voltage starts coming alive, I'll see a slight increase in current. I'm only going to bring her up to about 75 to 80 volts. I just want to hear something coming out of this amp. You 
hear that. We've got sound, meaning the high voltage is restored. Okay, now that I know that the amp is operational, now I want to clean up the filament lines. We're going to take the 100 ohm balancing resistors, install them on the terminal board, the filament feed from the transformer hit that board, and then we'll go to the tubes and the lamp. So this completes the grounding and filament wiring upgrade for the 5F1 kit amplifier. In this case, we use a star bit for a ground connection. The only thing better would have been soldering direct to the chassis, but the intent of this video is to give you a system that you can install yourself. So the center terminal here is our ground lug. The outside two terminals are the 6.3 volt AC filament wiring. So we have our 100 ohm balancing resistors installed here. We take off to the 6V6 with the 18 gauge wire. From there you reduce to 22 gauge wiring for the 12AX7. The dial lamp is also connected using the 22 gauge wiring over to the terminal board. So now you can see that this area down here which was pretty cluttered before is now easy to access for future maintenance. I would highly recommend when you guys are building these little kit amps that you go ahead and incorporate this system. I know that this doesn't necessarily agree with the print that Fender did back in the day, but it definitely eliminates confusion and makes the amp easier to work on. Okay, let's test it. All right, I got the amp powered up, guitar hooked to input number one. Let's see what we get through it. <laughs> good nice and quiet and now you can see the value of a good robust ground system power supply is happy and you don't hear any noise okay guys that's a wrap for this video of upgrading the grounding system on these kit amplifiers the same issue exists on pretty much all of them that's just the method they chose and it's not reliable so if you plan to build one of these or if you already have built one and you know that that problem exists, take the time, install the terminal board, use those tooth washers, and you have a good, reliable ground. Hope you enjoyed the video.